Hello and welcome to this Evaluate This video. Today we're going to be looking at installing Active Directory on Windows Server 2012 and we're going to do that in a Windows Azure environment so that we don't need to deploy any hardware. It makes it a really easy way to start trying out Server 2012. Here we have the Windows Azure website and as you can see there is an offer for a free trial available to me. This free trial will last for 90 days and it will provide me with 750 hours of compute time. That will actually be enough to run our domain controller for an entire month without having to do any extra work to tear it down. You'll also notice that we need to provide some credit card information. That's not because we're going to be charged. We can actually have a spending limit that prevents us from being charged on our Azure subscription. It's actually just to prove that we are actually um, acting as a human being and we're not just creating an account for the sake of it. So we'll click the next button and then we're going to be asked to verify our account. I've already signed in with my Windows Live ID so all that information within that account is pre-provided but it needs me to verify that I am actually using uh, my account genuinely. And I'm also on the next page going to go ahead and complete the credit card details to prove that I am a human being. That's it, I'm signed up for Windows Azure, so I'm gonna go up to the right-hand corner of the Windows Azure website and click on the portal link. That's then gonna load the Windows Azure portal and it'll bring in this very brief Windows Azure tour. Really handy if you've never used Windows Azure before to just click through the tour and see what's actually happening. It'll orient you around the Windows Azure console. Now I'm going to go along and create a virtual network. We need a network to connect the virtual machines together that we're going to create inside of Windows Azure. So here I'm going to provide a network. We're going to be using a fictional company called Fabricam and we're going to call this network Fabricam Cloud. Then we're going to provide the region we're going to create the network in. In this case we're going to use the Western Europe region as we're in the UK. I don't need to provide an, an affinity group but I'm going to use um, Fabricam Cloud Affinity as my affinity group name. The affinity group talks about how we're going to connect our machines together. Next I need to provide an address space. That's going to be literally an IP address space that we're going to use for all of our virtual machines inside of our Windows Azure Cloud. I'm just going to use 192.168.10 and use the entire available address space there. So we're going to use slash 24. Obviously that's the equivalent of using 255.255.255.0. And then I'm going to provide exactly the same thing as the subnet. I could subnet down my address space even more if I wanted to be a little bit granular about it, but in this case I'm just setting up a test environment so I won't bother. The next stage is to provide some details around DNS, however in this case we're going to configure that using PowerShell so we won't actually bother configuring it using the wizard. And with our network created we now need to just have, go and have a quick look at the documentation. If you go down to the bottom of the screen there, you'll be able to see the URL for the documentation that we're following. This is how we create our first Active Directory forest inside of our Windows Azure subscription. The first thing it tells us to do is to go and create that network, which we've already done. And the next thing it tells us is that we need some storage. So we'll pop back over into the Windows Azure console and create some storage. If we go to storage on the left hand side of the screen, then select new and then we'll select storage and quick create. The affinity group is already set up for us but we need to provide a URL for our storage. This URL not only has to be unique within our Windows Azure subscription but also unique within all Windows Azure subscriptions. And also as you can see here I get errors if I type in hyphens into the name so I just need to go and remove those hyphens. My name has to consist purely of something which is totally DNS addressable and actually in this case just contains alphanumeric characters. I'm going to create the storage account and that storage account is now going to be provisioned for us. Next we need to go and get some uh, components onto our PC in order to be able to complete the setup. So I'm just going to go back to the Windows Azure website, select the uh, manage section and go into downloads and download the Windows Azure PowerShell commandlets. I'm going to run the installation and I'll complete that, it's pretty self-explanatory, we won't go through that right now. I'm then going to go and start the Windows Azure uh, command prompt as a uh, PowerShell command prompt that is as a Windows administrator. I'm then also going to go down and just run these commands. Set the execution policy, import the PowerShell modules and then go and get some information about my Windows Azure subscription. So we'll type those into our Azure 
PowerShell command prompt here. And in fact, you can probably notice that I'm not actually typing each one of those in, I'm just copying and pasting them between the different windows inside of my machine. It makes life a lot easier in order to be able to set this particular part of the process up. What we're actually gonna do is go and download a file which contains our settings publishing file from Windows Azure. So as soon as I run this last line, it's gonna take us over to the Windows Azure website. It's gonna log us in and we're gonna to have to go and download our settings file. There we go, our publishing settings file is available. I'm just gonna save this to a location on my machine. And I'm just gonna save this file directly onto my desktop. We're gonna use this file in a couple of seconds inside of a script. First off, we need to go and import the PowerShell module for Windows Azure. Next, we need to go and select the publishing settings file that we're going to use. It's the one that we downloaded just a moment ago. Then we need to provide the details of the trial or the subscription that we're using. In this case, it's called three month free trial. You'll be able to find this from the Windows Azure portal. Then we need to provide the name of the storage account that we provided a little earlier on. The next setting that we need to provide is the virtual machine name. This is actually the host name of our virtual machine. We're gonna use Fabricam DC. We then need to provide the image that we're gonna use inside of Windows Azure. And I'll show you how we obtain that in a second. We need to provide a service name inside of Windows Azure. Azure uses service names in order to define uh, all the components that are made up of a service. We need to provide our affinity group that we created a little earlier on, and also the name of our virtual network that we created a little earlier on, called Fabricam Cloud. Finally, we need to provide a couple of little bits of configuration information here. We need to provide a password that we're gonna use on this virtual machine when it's created. That'll be the administrator password. The administrator username will be administrator. And finally, we need to select the subnet that we created earlier that we're gonna provision this virtual machine into. By the way, this script can be found at the address that we were looking at for documentation earlier on in this video. I'm gonna select the first seven lines of the script and run just that part of the script. That will import the modules and connect us up to our account. I'm then gonna run the get Azure VM image command alert at the bottom of the screen here. And you'll see these are all the virtual machines that are available to me. So I could bring in a CentOS image, I could bring in a SUSE image, I could bring in a uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1 data center image if I wanted to. And then I'd be able to configure those various different types of images if they supported it as a domain controller. Okay, now we're just gonna go and run that script and it's gonna create our Windows Azure Cloud service for us and it's also gonna start the provisioning of that virtual machine. We're gonna swap back over into our browser, refresh the page and we'll start to be able to see our service and our virtual machine provisioning inside of Windows Azure. Go to the all items view and we'll be able to see those things starting to come online. Here you can see the DC is actually in a stop status, that's because it is provisioning. We'll click on it to see more information. And we can see that the machine is creating itself right now. The counters are just beginning to initialize, those will come into play in a second, there we go. And our status will change in just a moment over to provisioning. And as you can see, this process has been sped up a little bit for the purposes of this video. It's fairly boring to sit there watching the provisioning process. So why not go and make a quick cup of coffee and then come back and do the rest of the configuration of your virtual machine. So now that our virtual machine is provisioned, let's go back to the all items view and we can see all of the components of the service that we've just created. I'm gonna highlight the uh, domain controller that we created and go down to the bottom here and select the connect option. That's gonna download an RDP file, we'll switch over to the desktop, which I'm then gonna open up. I'm gonna provide the administrator username and the password that I provided in my PowerShell script as I was creating this environment. And it's then gonna say that the identity can't be verified, that's fine. We don't have a certificate infrastructure in place yet in order to do that verification. And now I'm gonna be remote desktop into my virtual machine that I've created inside of my Windows Azure service. And this is completely ready for me to start getting to grips with evaluating Windows Server 2012. In the next video, you'll see that we're gonna set up the rest of this domain controller. We're gonna do basically a standard domain controller configuration on top of this virtual machine. I've been Simon Ray. Thank you very much for watching this video on creating your first domain controller on Windows Azure.